Algebra 2, Section 14.4. Here we're talking about area and the law of sines. So we start off by discussing area of a triangle. So if I draw out triangle ABC, uh, so let me just draw it like this. I have triangle ABC right here. On triangle ABC, uh, we would note that our sides opposite would be lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c. Um, if we were to find area of a triangle, okay, so area of a triangle, we'll do a nice fancy A for area. Area of a triangle equals one-half base times height. Once again, was base and height was a perpendicular. So if I were to come into here, uh, and if I use my side B, works out perfectly for a base. Uh, if I were to draw a perpendicular, that would be my side H. But... We don't know what H is. We don't know what B is. Sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on with this to figure out what that perpendicular would be. Uh, well, if we were to note one thing on here, we were to see that this angle right here, uh, once again, angle A, uh, could be used to figure out what this is because right here, this would give us a right triangle. So I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to give a right triangle, just kind of trying to get that same perspective right here where this is A, um, this now is my angle right here on reference. This was side C and this was H. So if I were to consider this, I would know, and a right triangle here, sine of angle A equals that opposite on that right triangle. Let's get my right angle here. Um, so H over the hypotenuse of C. So that means H would equal sine A and then multiplied by C. So my height is this right here. So if I come back up, I have 1 half times, um, I would have B for my base. This would be my overall base right here. And then my height would be sine of A and then times C. So what we see, kind of clearing this up, we have 1 half base or B times C times sine of A. So what we find out is we find out that given the area of any triangle, okay, so the area of any triangle, uh, we could have one half B times C sine of A, or we could go one half A times B sine of c once again that's referencing this over here or we could go one half a c sine of b so what we see is that we see that if we know two sides of a triangle and the angle in between those two sides we know side c we know side b and we know the angle in between we could find the area of that triangle without ever finding that height that would be in here so that formula is found once again over here on our formula sheet uh, if you notice the area of a triangle, area equals one half BC sine A, or area equals one half AC sine B. Uh, once again, depending upon what angle we know. So if I take my highlighter here, this is another one that we'll be working with. Uh, just kind of extending this out uh, right here. Uh, other things to consider in this problem said as we start talking about uh, law of sines. So law of sines is right above it here. Law of sines could be written once again as a proportion and, and there are two ways to consider this one. Uh, once again depends upon if we're finding angles or if we're finding sides. Uh, but if we notice that th this basically sets up a ratio where we talk about sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. So if we know two angles on a triangle and one side length we could be figuring out what it is. Now, granted, this does not need to have a right triangle. This could be for any triangle out there. Now, do realize there are some issues to law of sines. Uh, we'll discuss the ambiguous case of it uh, once again because law of sines cannot distinguish uh, between an acute or obtuse triangle uh, once again depending upon the way the situation is presented. 
Uh, so let's start looking at some examples here. Um, let's go to question number six in our textbook. So on question number six, uh, they give us this triangle. They tell us that we have a side length of eight centimeters, we have a side length of six centimeters, and an angle in between is 51 degrees. They tell us to find the area of this triangle. Okay, So if we're going to find the area of this triangle, it's going to equal one half the product of our two sides times the sine of the angle in between. So once again, we know this side, we know this side, we know the angle in between. That's a requirement for this area formula. Uh, given this, we just type this into our calculator uh, and we get 18.7 centimeters squared. The problem set told us to round to the nearest tenth of a unit. Um, if we go to number 10, okay, on number 10 here, they tell us that we have this given triangle. Uh, once again, this obtuse triangle looking like this. Uh, where this is 48 degrees, they tell us this is 21 degrees, and then they tell us this is 7.3, and they ask us to find this side right here. Now, do realize that no matter what is going on, as long as we know two angles on a triangle, we can calculate out the third angle, and we can apply law of sines. Uh, so if we consider what's happening here, simply stated, remember we have a theorem uh, that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180. So if we take 180, we subtract off our 48, we subtract off our 21, we see that we're left with 111. Okay, so that means this angle right here is 111 degrees. Uh, now, do remember for everything when we write angles, we want to write that degree symbol in here. Otherwise, we'd be talking about radian angles. Law of sine states that if I have the side over the sine of the angle, so we have a ratio, basically the side opposite of an angle, so the sine of this angle, and that's how it forms a ratio. Now this ratio can be written either way. I generally write it so that whatever I'm solving for is in my numerator. It allows for an easier way to solve. Um, so now if we consider this will equal, we look here 7.3 is opposite of 48 degrees, so we have 7.3 over 40 sorry, sine of 48 degrees. Uh, now we want to solve for x, so I could simply use my algebraic inverse of multiplying over by sine of 111 degrees, so x equals 7.3 sine of 111 degrees over sine of 48 degrees. Now what we want to do is we always want to solve this exactly, so uh, with technology that we have nowadays, we can easily type into the calculator so I can enter in my fraction. I go 7.3 times sine of 111. Uh, once again, noticing I have the little D on my calculator because we want to be in degrees and not in radians, otherwise this will mess up everything. Uh, divided by sine of 48 degrees, uh, we hit equals and we see that we get 9.17. Uh, so once again, rounding to the nearest tenth, 9.2. Okay, so we see that x equals 9.2, and this is not a degree answer, this is an actual side length. Uh, number 12. Number 12, they give us a situation where we talk about this triangle. Um, here they label, I guess, here the last one was labeled, I forgot to label it. Um, F, E, D. Uh, they tell us now we have x degrees right here. This is 43 degrees. Uh, this is 28, and this is 27. Now, do realize what's ever going on here, um, we do have some issues, but we have other theorems. If you remember back to geometry class, we had a triangle inequality theorem. Okay? So, triangle inequality theorem. Basically, kind of what this triangle inequality theorem talked about was that, or no, I'm sorry, not the triangle inequality theorem. Uh, that's a different one I'm thinking of. 
uh, triangle ratio theorem. Okay. Okay. Basically, smallest side corresponds to smallest angle. Okay. So that means that if 28 is opposite of 43 and 27 is opposite of this, what's ever happening here, it should be smaller than 43. Okay, so it's just a good way to kind of generalize your answer to realize that, hey, uh, this is what we have going on. So now we want to solve for x here. So I'm going to go sine of x degrees over 27 equals sine of 43 degrees over 28. Once again, the angle and the side opposite will form a ratio, and then any parts of this ratio can be said equal to each other. Um, so now we want to solve for x here. So what we go here is I go sine of x degrees equals, I'm going to multiply over by 27. Okay. And then now we got to finish solving for x. Now do realize this is a very horrible, ugly, irrational number right here. Um, so we're going to state x is going to equal the sine inverse. And then for work purposes, this is all I show. Okay, because I don't want to keep rewriting, 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 because I'm going to have to type this into my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to have to come in here now, and I'm going to have to go sine inverse. Uh, we have 27 times sine of 43 degrees, and then over 28. Once again, making sure to close parentheses. Uh, some calculators it won't matter as much. Others will be very particular with this. Do realize this entire thing is inside that sine inverse. Uh, so when we type this in, now we see we get 41.12, so on and so forth. Uh, so once again, to us round to the nearest tenth. So we go x equals 41.1 degrees now because this is an angle measure, uh, which does make sense because 27 is smaller than 28. Uh, so 43, so our answer must be smaller than 43, but because these numbers are close, we should be fairly close to that 43, so we're seeing that we're within the ballpark of what's happening there. Um, depending upon what's happening with all these situations, there's so many different things we can look at. One of the biggest problems and biggest issues is always being able to draw the picture. Okay, so let's look at number 18. Okay, on number 18, now they have a picture drawn for us, um, but I'm going to describe the picture and draw it um, looking at the problem itself and not actually their picture. So, a forest ranger in an observation tower sights a fire 39 degrees east of north. The ranger uh, in tower 10 miles due east of the, 10 miles due east of the first tower Sites the fire at 42 degrees west of north. Okay, how far is the fire from each tower? Okay, so basically we have two ranger towers. Okay, so we have one tower right here. Okay, so we're going to do like a little hut. And then we have another tower. I'll make this one a little fancier. It's like a little lighthouse type, so better quality one, maybe a newer one or a better ranger versus this other one. Um, we look at this and they state that this tower and this tower, so I'm just giving them some point locations here, as if we were looking on a map. They are due east. Okay, so once again, when we consider we have north on a piece of paper is generally upward. Uh, so one is due east of the other one, and they are 10 miles apart, okay? So we have 10 miles apart. As they're looking out here, they see this fire. So it says, uh, one sights the fire 39 degrees east of north. So here would be our north line, okay? So from each tower, this would be our north line on here. One sees it 39 degrees east of north. The other one sees it 42 degrees west of north. 
Okay, so if I draw my lines on what they're looking at, this is going here. Let's draw that line of sight out and this line of sight out here. Where it crosses right here, this is where our fire is at. Okay. They ask us basically how far is it from each tower. Okay, so we want to know how far is it from, from each tower. So if I come here and I say, okay, this is my X, this is my Y. So I'm going to say let X equal miles from east tower and then y equal miles from oh sorry this is my yep no x from west east let me get my directions right east is this one west is this one so x would be from the west one y would be from the east one um, so now basically we need to figure out well hey here's our triangle but we know absolutely nothing in between here uh, but what we do know is we do know what these angles down here are going to be okay once again because of what's happening we know that this is 39 degrees and if this is north and this is due east this is a right angle here so if I take 90 minus 39 that is 51 degrees making this then be 48 degrees okay so if this is 51 degrees, this is 48 degrees. That leaves me with 81 degrees left here. So now I can come and I can see I have all three angles inside my triangle. I have one side length. I can now start using my law of sines to find my other ones. So I can state that x over sine of 48 degrees equals 10 over sine of 81 degrees. I can also state for my y over here, I can state that y over sine of 51 degrees equals 10 over sine of 81 degrees. Okay, so in this park service, they're going to know how far their towers are apart and everything here. And basically, they're trying to get a distance location for descriptions. Now, granted, if you were putting a fire out, you should be able to look and see where the fire is to know precisely what's happening with everything. Um, as we consider this whole situation on here, uh, we're basically just solving. Um, so as we look at the problem in itself, x would be equal to, so we'd say x would equal 10 times sine of 48 degrees over sine of 81 degrees, uh, which then we would come here and use our calculator once again because there's no nice way to calculate out all of these abstract angles. It's not our 30, 60, 90s, 45 degree angles going around our unit circle like we had in our previous stuff. Uh, we get 7.5 miles. So we see 7.5 miles. Uh, solving our other one, we'd say y equals 10 times sine of 51 degrees over sine of 81 degrees. So once again, uh, nice part about that calculator is it saved it right there. So I can just arrow back in go up here, take out my 48, add in my 51, hit enter, and I get 7.9 miles. Once again, I'm rounding to the nearest tenth on this, uh, trying to stay kind of that significant digits. They give us 10 miles here, so two digits, so we're kind of staying two digits within here. Uh, and so that's basically what we would look at. So if we were on this west tower, we were on this one right here, we'd see we're 7.5 miles uh, um, away from here, this one would then be 7.9 miles away from that fire. Um, do realize drawing the picture is going to be the hardest part. Once we're in this, um, we can work with problems a little bit easier. Uh, in the next lecture um, for this section, we'll actually have two lectures. Um, I'll be discussing the ambiguous part and just giving triangle information. How can we tell if we have a possible ambiguous case or not?